All right, let's see who took a call. Francisco, are you on Flex? You're taking Zillow Flex calls? Yeah, I've been receiving them, but um, yeah, I, I didn't know I was part of it, but I have been answering them. Okay, so someone must have, because I don't remember you, um, I don't remember you auditioning yet, right? Right. So, um, yeah, so I thought it was a mistake, but I didn't want to like keep it like ringing. Um, so I'll just answer them. All right, we're going to play that one then, bro. It's our mistake then. We got to correct <laughs> yeah. that. We're going to play that one. Um, and did you did you book the appointment with the call? Uh, the most recent one that you're talking about today, I did. Okay, good. Uh, all right, only one way to do it, bro. Let's go. Um, all right, I got to talk to Jason. He needs to make sure who he's turning on for Zillow Flex because it's should be whoever's on the list um all right so this is it let me know give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear it hi hi susan, hi, susan. how are you doing i'm well thank you um i'm visiting san jose my daughter lives up, up can here, you guys hear it uh, a block away from st james and i wanted to see if we could look at the place yeah definitely um let me see um i did receive three inquiries of uh that you wanted to see a couple other places. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, St. James, was that your, your priority one? Yeah, yeah, that's the one that we're the most interested in. Yeah. Okay. And then I uh, have the other one in um, 144 South 3rd Street Unit, uh, 510. Um, you booked it at 3 p.m. and the other one also at 38 uh, North Alameda and Boulevard, also at 3 p.m. Um, today, yeah, today. yeah. Those other two, I'm, I'm less, I'm less interested in. But I just thought it's for comparison purposes. Um, uh, yeah, no problem. Um, let me see. So, St. James, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna call a listing agent see if we could come by today. Um, okay. As well, um, you did mention this was the most interested. May I ask what caught your eye on this particular place? Um, no, well, I really no, like the, mm -hmm. I, I, I really like the, um, the Julian that Sarah's living in right now, my daughter, and, um, this one's just a block away or block and a half away. So I really like the location of the St. James one. Gotcha. Um, okay. and two, two bedroom is what we want. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we wanted it at least 1200 square feet. Um, so that, that's. That's why it's primarily the, the location of the St. James is what is appealing. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, because I just wanted to see if there was like anything like uh, nearby. Um, yeah. Or like something close to your uh, yeah. need. So it seems like this location you really, you really love, right? And location, yep. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Uh, I'm, in fact, I'm at San Pedro Square right now and I'm looking at the building. So I'm oh, okay. Nice. I really like the location. <laughs> Okay, Susan, and um, let me see. You did mention that you were uh, moving in, and um, you came from like outer state. You mentioned. I'm out of state, yeah, but my daughter is here in San Jose, and we'd be buying a place for her. Oh, okay, nice, nice. So the motive is like you guys are relocating, for, or your daughter's relocating. Yeah, my daughter is located here at Julian. At Julian. Okay, got you, got you. Okay. Perfect, Susan. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to call a listing agent. I'm going to try to book us to see if uh, we're able to go. So sometimes um, it could be occupied, but um, I'll call you back to confirm. Um, okay. 2 p uh, let me see. No, not 2 p.m. Sorry, 2 p.m. And then okay, I'll, right. I'll look around at the other two properties that you uh, mentioned too. So just in okay. case like, we are able to slide by and see if you uh, okay. want to watch them. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and two o'clock is probably a little on the early side. We'd probably be more like at three o'clock. So, okay. it, you know, it's at, so any perfect. time after probably three this afternoon. Perfect, perfect. Three will be ideal. Okay. All right, yes, Susan. Well, thank you so much for calling. Um, do you have any other questions for me right now? No, not, not just now. Thank you.
All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's give it up for Francisco. I want to give it up. He's thrown on the spot. Um, obviously, he, you know, he's been practicing. He's been in the office. He's been rehearsing. Um, and he didn't even know he was on flex, but he jumped on the opportunity. Uh, what we're looking for, guys, is we're looking for the ALM, right? Appointment, location, motivation, those three. And then besides that, we're looking for you know, the energy levels, did he build rapport, stuff like that, right? So let's really quick go down the line. Um, who would like to give some feedback? Maybe Robert Blanca, let's get our senior agents. Give me some feedback on how you feel he did uh, overall. I, I got to say kudos right off the bat, man, just for, just for picking up that phone call, right? So great job on that. I, I know that we've been working on a couple of things. Um, where'd he go? Where's Francisco at? Francisco. Okay. He's there. Oh, there you are. Um, uh, so good job on that, bro. I'm really proud of you on that part. Uh, the only thing that we got to do now is we've got to clean it up a bit, right? We've got to make it sound like it's a linear progression from start to finish, right? If you look at the call, the call is kind of everywhere, right? So now what we got to do is we got to shorten that line up and make sure that we're on that straight on that line as straight as possible, right? So that goes back to learning the LP mama that we've all been talking about. Cass, you should have that too. Every one of you guys should have that, right? Learning that LP mama and following, that should be your linear line that you should follow as close as possible, uh, uh, as close as possible. If you deviate from that, it's okay. But get back on that same line and start going moving forward on that LP mama script, right? Uh, and then for this, uh, Rob, for this one, since it's a flex, we're not doing the full LP mama, guys. It's just doing the ALM part. Yeah. But that's part of the LP Mama, right? The ALM is in the LP Mama, which is it's only the ALM part. So appointment, location, motivation. But the same thing is true, right? So because you kind of you kind of confirm the appointment at the end, like you kind of jumped around a little bit. Um, I do realize you were probably nervous. You're probably thrown on the spot, right? So I, I agree with Rob. Like stick to the A, the L, the M, right? Just confirm the appointment right away uh, and, and go down the line. Blanca, what do you got from? I, I want to say the same. It's just, you know, it's okay to deviate from the ALM, but bring it back and just make sure, you know, you're feeling confident. You want to portray to the client that you're the person that's going to guide them to the home, feeling a little more confident. And I understand it's the first call. So kudos again um, for jumping into it and going for it. It's just now perfecting and fine tuning. I've heard you on the phones and I've seen your progress and you're very pleasant. Your tonality is good as well. Um, so just a little more confidence. And once you know the ALM and you have it honed in, it'll be a slam dunk for you. Yeah. Can, can, can I say something just really quick uh, overall, Kike, on, on it? On, on so, so there's a lot of new faces that are with PRG that are that are that are not on Zillow Flex. I think there's more non than they are. Eventually, you guys want to be on these Zillow Flex calls, guys. That's how easy it is. Is once you start to figure out how the ALM works and the LP Mama starts to work, uh, these are the types of leads that you want to jump into it. These are these are literally people that are calling you saying they want to go view a property. So it's our job just to figure out how to handle them. Uh, uh, effectively in order to get the next step, which is to go view the property, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely, guys. Um, so I want to add one thing too is uh, energy level, right? I would try to bring your energy up a bit, Francisco, right? And I've talked to you about this before, right? Naturally, Francisco, you're a little more, you're a little more quieter, right? Sometimes, but where's that, that uh, Francisco who needs to be a little bit aggressive, right? So for, for everyone, it's going to be different. Some people are too loud and they need to bring it down. Some people are not loud enough and they need to bring it up. So I want you to remember um, for you, Francisco, because you're a little bit more timid, you need to turn it up a little bit more when you speak to clients, right? Rob is the complete opposite of you. Rob, I got to tell him to tone it down sometimes because he's, he's a little more aggressive, right? But that's just naturally how he is. So I want you to remember, Francisco, when, when you're on a call, that's like when you're, if they're filming a movie and they say action, that's action right there, right? You turn it on and you got to get into character. So there's two things that you can do to immediately boost your, your confidence. Number one is to sit straight up. Everyone get their, feet, their, their hand like this and put it in their chest. And if you just open up like that, 
automatically your voice is going to get louder because your, your chest is open. It opens up your diaphragm and then you're able to communicate a little bit louder. When you're a little hunched over like this, your voice is going to actually go down. So let's say, for example, you were taking that call in the, in the office and you, were, you, you had the call and then you kind of went down into your desk. The call is going to sound a lot lower. But if I were to like get up and stand up and put my chest out, now I'm like a little bit louder. Even though I'm a little further away from you guys, I'm louder, I'm more confident because my chest is up, my shoulders are back and my diaphragm is open more up. So for you, there's like physical things that you can actually do, right? If you know you're quiet, stand up when you're talking to people, open your chest up. Remember chest out, open it up. It's going to make you project a lot louder and more confident. Um, that's one thing. Uh, ALM, right? Appointment. So in the beginning, uh, get the appointment over with in the beginning, right? Hey, you want to go see this property at two or three or whatever the time is? Great. Let me go ahead and, uh, and confirm that we can get into the property. Here's a little thing too, is don't say I'm going to call the listing agent, right? Always say, I'm going to check with the seller. Let me check with the seller to make sure we can get in at three. And I'll go ahead and call you right after this to confirm. But I got you scheduled for three. I'm going to go ahead and confirm and get back to you to make sure we're good to go. That's all you got to do, Francisco. Just get that over with. And then you already checked off the A part, the A. And then I like what you did. Hey, is this the only area you're looking into? Are there any other areas? So that's the location part, right? So you did do a good job of asking about the location. Uh, what caught your eye, right, with this particular property? Um, and then you went to motivation, right? I think you like reconfirmed the motivation. I still wasn't clear though, Francisco, was it her that was going to move in or was it the daughter? Yeah, it seems like it's going to be the daughter, but um, she's the one, the mom seems to be the one calling. So I kind of figured at that point, like if I was to like meet them in person, like ask more, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but she said they came out of state and then she said her daughter lives there already. So I don't know if her daughter lives in that building already or like around there. Like, um, yeah, but I didn't want to go into full detail, I suppose. Okay. okay. Um, and that makes sense. And it was a little unclear, right? And you're not always going to have someone else calling for someone else. That's probably rare. It's usually the person calling directly. But once in a while, you might run into this. Now, if you know that does the daughter is actually going to be the one buying and the mom is calling, what other questions could you have asked to make sure that, you know, the daughter was going to be there, right? I would have confirmed that the daughter was going to be there. That's what I would have done, right? Because if the mom shows up and the daughter's not there, the daughter's going to want to see the house eventually, right? So that's something that I would, that I would coach you on is I would make sure the daughter's going to be there. Hey, Susan, all right, great. Is your daughter going to, you know, meet us at the property as well? I'd love to meet her. You know, something like that. Gotcha. Right. Uh, anything else, guys? Any other feedback from anybody else here on the call that's taking Zillaflex? Liliana, you got anything? Mai, Carla, anything else that wasn't said already? I, I think, I think you know what? Being brand new to the business um, and you ask vague questions, for some weird reason, gets you farther. It's when you become a, a senior agent, you start to ask more questions. You start to disqualify uh, uh, the prospects, right? So even being as vague as possible in the stage that you're at in your career is not a bad thing, Francisco, right? Because now it allows you to move over to the next step, not only learn it, right? But also still able to perform and ask more of these questions, right? So just remember the ALM, stick with the ALM. And even though there's always going to be more information that you can get, it moves you to the next step where now you're able to build that rapport and you're able to perform, right? So it's when you become a senior agent or when you come higher, you start to ask all these bunch of questions and you start to figure out why you should not be going out there. Do you have yeah. an agent? You start to ask all these things. So I think where you're at right now in your career, right? Take these, take these steps and move it over to move it next, right? Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to want to kind of protect your time and you're going to start asking questions, but it, it's right. It's where it's right where you're supposed to be at. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Let's give it up for Francisco, guys. One more time. All right. Let's see if I got one more. I want to hear one more. Um, Francisco, yeah. how did you, did you know, did you, how did you know how to do that? Did someone teach you that? Um, do what exactly? The ALM? 
Yeah, is that was was that off the top of the dome? Because that's pretty dope, bro. I, I just been looking at the drive. It's all <laughs> right on. So the drive works, huh? Good job. Yeah. Good job. Geek. <laughs> so the training material in the Google Drive actually works, guys. There's training material in there, right? ALM. Um, those of you guys that aren't on Flex yet, if you want to be on Flex, you need to master the ALM, right? I'll send out a uh, message in the Slack right now um, of all the steps you got to do. Now, just just a disclaimer, Zillow Flex, we have we can only let people in like a little bit at a time because it's based off how many leads we have. But eventually, you know, everyone's goal should be to be on Zillow Flex as well. Um, but if I call your name and say like, hey, Michaela, you're up next and you're not ready, then I'm going to have to go to the next person. So you all we always want to have a good bench of agents that are ready to go, because also some agents do get um, they decide to pause or maybe they're too busy with leads or maybe they, um, they go on vacation, right? And we need to fill in the gaps or something like that. And that's where having a good bench of agents who are ready and know are versed in the, the, the script and everything are gonna come into play. Um, Cass said, can he interview today? Um, yes, we can, we can interview towards the end. Now, now these guys know how to interview though, right, Kike? Maybe you should lay out the rules of how, what, what you're looking for so these guys can start practicing because there's, there's a lot of new faces. Yeah. I mean, the interview is basically, you're going to have to do a live role play in front of everybody, right? We're going to do a practice right now. Well, I'll be the agent. I'll be the client. You're the agent and we're going to role play and we're going to grade you on, on everything. That's basically what it is. Um, so give me one second. I'm going to pull up one more. You can do mine, Enrique. I had a, a pretty good call on Monday. All I did was book the appointment and I met with him this morning and he wants to write an offer. So um, I'm super, I just booked the appointment because I think I'm better in person. So that's is all it, I care about on, on Zillow. Is it Edgar? Edgar Cuevas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's play that one. There you go, guys. All right, we're going to hear from the beast mode right here. Liliana. Um, let's go. Hi there, Alex here. I'm connecting you to a local agent now. Hi, hello, is this Edgar? This is Edgar, yes. Hi, how's it going, Edgar? My name is Lily. I'm a local Zillow Premier agent. How are you doing this evening? Uh, so far, so good, Lily. Good, good to hear that. I see here that you inquired about seeing the property on 8224 Street in Gilroy. Is that correct? That is correct. Awesome. Yeah, I actually know this property very well. I know I just came on the market right now. It's a great deal. Um, when did you want to tour it? I didn't really get too much information about when you wanted to tour it. Um, so what, what are the times that are actually available? So let me, I would actually have to check first, uh, with the listing agent, but it looks like it's vacant. Um, so if you give me just, um, maybe a couple of times that may work for you, I can follow up and see what's the best time and then get back to you. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, what, ideally, what time would work best for you to tour the property? So, uh, ideally, it would be any time before 10 a.m. And, uh, you know, I get off pretty late. So, this would be Monday through Friday. So, any time before 10 a.m., Monday through Friday. And then, I mean, I get off at 7.30. I don't get home until, like, 8.30. So, it have to be about, about those times. And then weekends. Weekends, I'm available, typically. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, let me just double check to make sure that it's available tomorrow. Um, would tomorrow or Wednesday at 9 a.m. work for you? Uh, Wednesday at 9 a.m. would work. Okay. Then this is what I'll do. I'll what I'll do is I'll follow up. Uh, let me just double check to just make sure that it's okay with the sellers that Wednesday at 9 a.m. works. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and send you a text message with my contact information. That way you can just contact me directly, and just in case you have any questions moving forward. Instead of, you know, going um, and, you know, calling Zillow and getting connected with an agent, you can just contact me directly. Um, but I'll check. I'll check to see if it's available Wednesday at 9, um, at 9 a.m. And then I'll follow up to confirm with you. That sounds good to me. All right. Sounds good. Okay, Edgar. In the meantime, like I said, I'm going to send you my contact information. If you have any questions, just feel free to let me know. Perfect. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. Oh, you too. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's give it up. Give it up for Liliana. All right, uh, who is in control of that call? Liliana, right? Liliana, yeah. or Liliana was in control, right? Lily was in control. Now, I'm looking at ALM, looking at energy, I'm looking at rapport. So 
A, she, the A part, she crushed that, right? The appointment. Um, what, I, what I want you guys to take away is there's some clients where you got to actually control them a little bit and kind of guide them. Because the guy was kind of like, well, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. in the weekends, right? So she took control and said, how about tomorrow at 9 a.m., right? Or how about Wednesday at 9 a.m.? So she, she heard what he said, and then she said, nope, we got to hurry up and get in front of this client. There's a sense of urgency. How about tomorrow, right? And that's what you guys have to do. Sometimes if the client's being a little bit vague, you got to keep going back to the, to the uh, appointment and try to pin it down. Because what he said was, he tried to ask her, well, when's a good time? And she's like, she flipped it back. No, when's a good time for you, right? And that's how she was able to take control. So you guys need to be able to be confident enough to do that. Um, she didn't touch on location or motivation, uh, which she said in the beginning. Um, but I got a feeling that she just wanted to just get in front of the guy, you know, and, and then from there build her rapport. Um, the Liana's experienced enough where, you know, she can kind of gauge the client, right. And seeing if they're being a little more talkative and stuff like that for some, for all of you guys who are just starting out, make sure you go through the location and motivation part. Right. And then once you get like experienced and good at this, you'll be able to kind of sense when you got to make the calls a little longer or a little bit shorter. Um, you know, so she has kind of that discretion. Energy wise, her energy was, was, was it high or low? I mean, thumbs up or down? High, right? Did she sound excited? Did she sound happy? Did she sound like happy to talk to this guy, happy to meet with the client, happy to get out there? That's the kind happy of- Happy to meet, happy to interact, yeah. Interact, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the kind of energy you need to bring on those calls, right? Um, I will say the only challenge that you may run into when not talking about location or motivation is if for some reason this guy like doesn't show up or ghosts you or sees another property, he may not remember you too much, right? So you got to be careful when not like building more rapport because you want to also have a good experience with that guy and let them remember you. This in case, just in case this property doesn't work out you want them calling you back, right? Because you took the time to ask them a little bit more about themselves. So that, I would say, Lily, that's my only feedback for you is just be careful with doing that. Um, Cause he may not like this property, he may not end up buying it, right? Or he may not like it. Um, and did you meet with him today? So maybe give us a little context now about what happened going forward. Um, yeah, so I met with him this morning and like for me personally, like I just like to book the appointment. I like to keep it short. One thing I always do after I book the appointment is I do follow up. I do send a text message that way I'm their point of contact. So I actually do know this property. I actually know the listing agent. Um, her and I used to work together at Intero. So I called her before and before I even showed the property to kind of just get some information when he, we were there, he, one of the first things, you know, it's always awkward when you meet some, sometimes when you meet someone for the first time, he was like, um, well, can you tell me about this property? And I'm like, actually I can, cause I know about it because I was prepared and I did my homework about the property beforehand. Um, I know that, um, he had a question about the area. Um, I asked, um, I know the area. So I, I, I brought it up to him. Um, um, you know, price point, it's like a really like, um, like a lower end price point, there's not a lot that comes on the market at this price point. Um, whether it's now or even in the future, there's nothing really under 800,000 single family and home in, in Gilroy. So I know that. Um, um, he was a little hesitant about like writing an offer. And he asked about the market. Um, I gave him my, I honestly do think that the best time to buy is during the winter time, regardless of the of, of what's happening with inflation and the rates, because you face less competition. Um, I, you know, nobody wants to do anything during the holidays because it's cold and it's dark. So if people are selling, it's because they have that need. Um, and I think that buyers need to take advantage of that. So I kind of go through my regular spiel and he was like, you know what, you're right. And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, and I said, you know, if you don't buy this one, like, is there another one that you like? He's like, no, there's not. And I'm like, exactly. There might not be for a while because their homes in this price point don't come up very often. Um, he talked about, he's like, you know what? Like, um, I, he's like, I was pre-approved before um, with like my cousin or something. He's a loan officer um, a few months back. Uh, I think I can just have him refresh the pre-approval. Um, 
if I wanted to write an offer, how quickly can I write an offer? And I'm like, you can write an offer tonight if you want to. Um, he mentioned that he works from like 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So we're going to meet later tonight and jump on Zoom and go over like the offer process. Um, like for me, I just want to make the appointment because like the I like to do the actual script in person. That's just my background. I met people off the Internet and charm them and made convert them so that's I know that I'm better in person so usually I just care about meeting with them I follow up with them right after the phone call so they have my contact information and then I perform kind of like Rob says in person because I know that's my strong suit awesome awesome right on, good stuff Lily um good luck on that one thank you um I will I do want to bring up a point though I was just thinking is remember Zillow is grading the call based off the ALM as well right that is one of our metrics um, so I need to kind of take back what I said. You need to make sure you do the ALM part, even if it's just real quick, like, Hey, is this the only location you're looking in? Um, Hey, what are some of your must haves? It could be short if you want to keep it short, but just make sure you hit the L and the M because they are giving us a score on that. And if, if we fall below a certain score that can, um, affect, you know, our team's position with, with flex. So, uh, make sure you hit the ALM, whether it's short or long, and, you know, use your discretion from there. Okay. Uh, so, good stuff, guys. Give it up for uh, Liliana. You have anything else, Rob? Yeah, let's just do one, one, one higher, higher level. Lil Lily's great. She's awesome. She's a rock star. She knows exactly what to do. But let's, 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 oh, we're always learning, right? So your ending part, right? Your ending part was a little confusing, right, on the call. I think what was happening is that we were adding a lot more things that did not need to be added into the conversation, like, hey, I, I, uh, Zillow, something about Zillow. Uh, you said something about that, right? So even though you are right, Right. Let's let's refrain from adding extra stuff into a conversation. Let's try to be just clear as concise and short as possible and then get to the point. Right. Because you can raise a couple of questions like, what does that mean? And, and again, oh, I yeah. did like I did like what Kika said. Kika did say something is I think we should forget about saying that we're calling the listing agent. Right. I, I, I think I think uh, let's make them believe that we have this much control that we're now talking directly to the sellers. So let me go ahead and call the sellers to see if that appointment is correct. I think that is a lot more powerful than saying, let me call the listing agent, right? Uh, There's a lot more, you put more power onto yourself. So I got a question for that, Robert, because it's like, I actually think they enjoyed what she said, or she said, hey, that way you don't have to call Zillow directly. I'm going to send you my information so that way you can contact me and I'll be working with you. So she pretty much sets herself up like that. I think that's the part that you you heard yeah so sure. let, let, yeah. let's dissect that let's dissect what that what rob's saying right? guys really quick the, what rob's saying is instead of saying so you don't have to call zillow like just say hey i'm going to send you my contact info information so you can call me directly because sometimes sometimes we may say something that will spark the client to ask more questions and then yeah. we start we start getting into having to explain ourselves right so it's almost like thinking one step ahead. Yeah. Because what if the client would have said, well, what do you mean I don't have to call Zillow directly? Or what yeah. do you mean calls another agent through Zillow? I right? thought I was calling Zillow. Right? I thought I was, right? And then that could have opened up a whole nother can of worms. So I think what Rob was saying is, don't add that part in. Just say, I'm going to send you my contact info yeah. and you can reach out to me directly if you have questions. Now, yeah, now, I, now. I always do tell them that. And part of the, I mean, again, it's sometimes it's a live call. I, I took it yeah. in the in middle of dinner. So I was with my family. So I stepped out and it was cold. But a part of the reason why I do is I've had it actually happened. Um, I think you're right. I should just let them know, contact me directly. I've had it happen where by the time I show them the property, they inquired on Zillow um, already and they get connected with other Zillow agents. So by the time they get to me, they've already inquired to see three properties with different agents i think i had and then um so then that's probably that's pro kind of part of the reason i'm like don't contact zillow contact me directly because i think i had one um actually pretty recently and i met with them and they actually met with our some of the other flex teams and i know the other agent they're like oh yeah i met with another agent named blah 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 that i connected with on zillow and then i googled her and she's part of zillow flex on another team so what this person was doing was contacting um multiple agents i uh, i don't know how it happened or, or i think her her boyfriend was contacting um it was her her boyfriend and her mom all three of them were on zillow different accounts contacting That's inquiring so at the end of the day they had three agents that um i had to compete with um so yeah that's the only way that would happen guys so yeah. That's that's a pretty rare um, thing, Lily. The only way that would happen is if they had three separate accounts. 
Okay. Um, because once that guy contacts you and it shows that you took the call, he, if he tries to go back on, it's going to show you as the agent. It won't okay. show another flex team. Now, if he logs in under his girlfriend's account, yeah, and then I she think... can contact someone else, and another agent will show up. So that it was messy. I was like, no, don't call Zillow. Just call me directly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'll just tell people to contact me directly. Yeah, now, now, literally, the concept of what you did was right. That was right, right? It's just maybe how we made it may have right. said it. Now, to go back to you, Juan, let's not we're 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 playing the what if game. There's a lot of what ifs that we can play. Right. So let's not play the speculation game. Let's just go. If we end up saying it correctly, we don't have to play the what if game anymore. Right. Well, what if they do this? What if they do that? That's a much harder game to play than if we were just to say it correctly from the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're always going to have those ones and twos where you got these rare circumstances that that's part of the game. But if you're consistent with, with what you're supposed to do every time, then you're going to average out right to, to being consistent with your numbers. So, um, the other thing too is by making sure you don't say the listing agent part, because you may get that one client that's a little savvy and goes, Hey, I thought you were the listing agent. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you, now you're going to have to try to explain yourself how you're not the listing agent. Remember, like, think about it. Like they don't know, they only know what you tell them. Right. There you go. There so you, go. you don't want to put seeds in their head and then they start going down the loop, the rabbit hole of, Oh, wait, you're not the listing agent. Wait, this and that. Right. So that's why you just say, hey, let me check with the seller or let me check with the seller side and then I'll get back to you and confirm. That's the best way to minimize those things from happening. Yeah, don't have conversations that you don't need to have conversations about, right? <laughs> yeah. Just because you created the conversations, right? Yeah, exactly. So be as concise and straight as possible. We used to say, um, there was a guy that we, that we know uh, that we used to say, you can talk yourself out of a free lunch, right? Yes. You give him a free lunch and then he starts asking, well, where are we going to go eat? Well, what do they have there? Well, this and this, and then by the end, you're like, dude, I'm not taking you to lunch, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you talked yourself out of it, right? There's, there's that saying, right? Talking yourself out of a free lunch. And that's when you start putting more on it that it shouldn't have been in the equation, right? So um, just stuff to consider, guys, but good, great job overall. Yeah, great job, Lily. Um, and I hope you get that offer accepted. We need that one. Let's go. Uh, all right, live call. Are we doing a live call today? Um, or do we want to interview Cass right now? Cass, you ready to interview? Oh, what's up, my boy Cass? Ready? Oh man, let's see this. He says he's ready. All right, Cass. Um, <clears throat> so I'll be the uh, I'll be the client, and you're basically just gonna gonna call or it's gonna patch you through, and we'll make up a scenario. I'm looking at one, two, three Main Street. It says I want to see it today at three o'clock, and. Uh, Alex here connecting you to Enrique. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Enrique? My name is Cass. I'm your I'm a Zillow Premier agent specializing in the Bay Area. I see you are interested in 123 Main Street. Uh, when's a good time to get you in to take a look at that property? Are you available uh, evenings or uh, daytime? Um, hey, Cass. Um, yeah, nice to meet you. I'm available at uh, 3 p.m. today. Does that does that work? Um, I can go ahead and reach out to the seller and I'll see if that time works for today. Uh, in the meantime, is there any other time uh, that will work for you just in case it doesn't? Um, any day this week at three or four. So I'm pretty much free from work at that time. So three or four o'clock any day this week would work. Okay, so I'm going to reach out. I'm going to try and see for today for sure. Um, and then how's tomorrow at three if that doesn't work? Yeah, that, that could work too. Okay. Uh, have you seen any other homes in the area uh, while you're out looking for this home? Or, or no, have you seen no, not really yet. This will be my first time. This will be your first time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about this property uh, makes you want to get out and see it? Um, I liked, uh, yeah, I liked that it was a two-story and it was nicely remodeled. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm mainly looking for something that's like ready, you know, remodeled and ready to go. I'm pretty busy, okay. so I don't really want to you know, do any sort of repairs or anything. So something like this looked like it might fit well for me and my family. Okay. Would you be interested while we're out in looking at any other homes in there? Uh, possibly. Yeah. If you have anything that's similar. Um, yeah, possibly. Okay. Um, make sure uh, we definitely get that covered. And uh, are there any other questions that I can get answered for you? Uh, no, no. I just want to go check this one out and then kind of kind of go from there. Okay, 
Great. Um, so my goal is to exceed your expectations, and I hope that I have. Um, and if that I have, if I have, I hope you pass that on to Zillow uh, and anyone else that you know that is in the market right now. Can I okay. can I count on you to do that for me? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a confirmation text um, that's going to have uh, my information on it. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach back out to me, call or text. Uh, and I'll get those questions answered for you. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to the seller, um, see if those times work, uh, and then I'll be uh, reaching back out to you uh, for the confirmation just to let you know what the times are, what the seller says. How's that? Sound? Okay. Sounds good. All right, Enrique. Um, so just before I go, last thing, I just want to make sure I have your correct phone number as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's it. All right, great. So uh, we'll be in touch soon. All right, thanks. Have All right, let's give it up. Give it up for Cass. All right, all right. I like the energy, brother. I like the energy. Um, who, Blanca, you want to give him some feedback? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the energy was excellent. You started off really good, confident, asked the proper questions. Um, maybe don't ask for referrals yet. Just keep it, okay. keep it to the to the script. Once you meet them, build with a rapport in person, then, you okay. know, pitch for it. But for now, just focus on, on the nugget. Scheduling that appointment, sticking to the script, you did really good, though. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Liliana, what, what feedback can you give Cass? Yeah, I like, he, um, I like his tone. Um, it was, and was confident. Um, he, I liked it. I mean, I think he went straight to the point. He got the appointment, which is the number important, number one thing. So I think he did good for, it. I, I think that, he, I think he's ready. All right. All right. Uh, anything else, Rob, what do you got, bro? I, I, I think he did a good job. I think, uh, uh, I think he did a good job. Uh, uh, let's, let's get rid of maybe like the, what, uh, what if, uh, on your end, I think you asked, right. You asked something, right. Let's say it, it'd be more, it'd be more effective. Say, here's what I recommend, you know, or what, or the Kiko, the Kiko one, Kiko one has a good one. Um, what I found out from previous clients is that, uh, you know, when I end up bringing two to three homes other than the home, you know, that we're bringing in, okay. clean that up. We have to figure that out one okay. out, but that find that script that's on there. It's on there. I know Kika had it. That's a good one. Instead of asking them, what do you think? You know, maybe ask, come from a professional point of view and say, this is what I recommend, right? How about okay. we go take a look at two or three other properties while we're in the area, right? Okay. And yeah. then uh, there was one more, uh, just being, a, uh, just at the end, being the clear, concise. I think when you started going off script, you started getting a little shaky, okay. right? You started getting a little shaky on your, on your, uh, on the wording that you were saying, and you're adding a whole lot of fluff, right? Okay. You caught yourself really quick. But I think if you stay, if you stay the course, right, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to feel a lot more comfortable with the script where you're, where going off script is going to make more sense mm -hmm. right okay. now. No, 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 Stick, stick, stick with the script. Okay. But other like than that, brother, you could. Self-aware though, you did, when you were going off of it, you brought it back. Yep. It's good to be self-aware and bring it back. And, and instead of ranting for like 10 minutes, I tend to do that. I like that you did that right away. Good job. I do yeah. that in my regular life too. I go off into these rabbit holes and, and uh, it's usually uh, my girlfriend who goes, Hey, get back on subject. So uh, yeah, she it, it, jumped in my head just now, like get back on top. Yeah. It's more important now. Remember, because this is your communication skills, right? This is, this is, this is what's right. feeding you right now. Right. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're clear, you're concise and you're straight uh, as straightforward as possible. Right. Okay. So, so you have to, your language, your skills is going to have to be a lot more exact than what it was. If you and I were talking out on the streets. Right. right. Okay. So let me let me uh good feedback. Yeah, guys. Yes. Let me, Enrique, Enrique, let me let me jump in real quick. Sorry guys. Oh, I didn't even know yes. you were there. Right? <laughs> I wanna. I was getting back from the doctors. Hey, but real, real quick, I want to throw a little curveball to Cass. Right. So get, getting back to the role play, Cass. Let's say the client says, "Hey, yeah, you know, great. I'll meet you at three at the property." Hey, Cass. By the way, is it a good time to buy right now? How would you respond um, to that? Well, it all depends on uh, what makes sense for you. Um, it, it's it's a great time to buy uh, if you're really motivated. Um, eesh, you got me. We went over. The I would always, I would always just I would always just say that it's it's a great time it's a great time to buy. Uh, but it, it it's always more so about what makes sense 
uh, rather than uh, just kind of looking at, uh, you know, what the market is doing? What makes sense for you? Good answer. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. And again, guys, the reason why I want to throw this out there, because Enrique, you know, did, you know, basic, the basic script, but I want us to, you know, and I know Cass can handle this. That's why I wanted to throw it in there where, you know, they're going to ask you, well, you know, what do you think about this neighborhood? What do you, you know, is it a good time to buy? Or what do you think about rates? They're going to throw these little things in there. So I also want us to be prepared for that. And, the, you know, one of the great things, you know, one thing that I would probably do and there's like, you know what, Enrique, that's a great question. You know, when we come, when we go and look at this property at three o'clock today, we can kind of go over what's going on in the market to see if it makes sense for you to purchase now or later. How's that okay. sound? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that- again, guys, this is the, in the real life, they're going to throw a little, they're going to throw a few more punches back. Right. Okay. Um, and they're not bad. It's just, it's just, we want to be able to confidently answer those, those questions or approach those, those situations. So yeah. basically yeah. you want me to kind of maybe touch the question, but defer it to when we meet basic, almost like how we do when we're here doing the calls. Absolutely. Yes. I, I, mean that, I mean, again, Enrique, maybe you can chime in on that, but that's the way I would approach that. Because again, okay. my biggest thing is I want to get in front of them. Like Lily says, Lily's awesome in person, right? So once they meet you, Cass, then you can kind of or open up and dig deeper into, you know, what their question means around, is it a good time to buy and figure out, okay. a, figure out a solution for them. So, okay. so, so Cass, we went over this. We went over this. You, you and I specifically went over this, right? Yeah. Where, where we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to give our opinions. The moment you start saying that it's a great time to buy, you're actually selling at that point, right? Yeah. Right yeah. now, at this point of the game, you're not trying to do any of that stuff. Right now, what you're trying to do is you're trying to fight that opportunity to take, to get to the next step, which is the appointment, right? Or to meet up with them. Once you meet up with them, right. you schedule the appointment. Once you schedule the appointment, at that point, you want to lay out your feelings. Right. Okay. But right now you want to be walking like a relationship together. Remember, we talked about this, right? right? So the moment you start to go against your partners, which is your client in this case, when the moment you start, you start to butt heads, you're trying to mm-hmm. eliminate any of that stuff. So right now okay. you said, Hey, listen, Mr. Customer, that's a great question, right? Why don't we go ahead when we meet, we'll go ahead and discuss a little bit more. All you're doing is touching the objection, right? Mm-hmm. To get you to the next step. And eventually okay. you won't be able to defer that question any longer where you're going to have to throw in your own opinion and you are going to have to do a little bit of sales and saying, hey, listen, it's a great time to buy or it's not a great time to buy. But right, right. now you don't have enough information to make a conclusion. So right. why even go down that route at this point, right? So yeah. at this point, just touch it, acknowledge their feelings, right? Mm-hmm. And then the objection is to get them to the next step, which is what Lily says, to perform. Right. Okay. At that point, yeah. we're going to be able to meet Cass. I'm going to be able to see Cass perform. Right. Yeah. So let me let me uh, let me step in, guys, and then we're going to wrap up. So here's the question to all you guys, so you guys could think about that objection. Is it a great time to buy? Raise your hand if you think it's a great time to buy. Okay. Now keep your hand up. Raise your hand if you think it's a great time to buy. Okay. Now keep your hand up if you think it's a great time to buy for everyone. Is it a great time to buy for everybody? No, right? Because we don't know because it's, it know. depends. It depends on their situation, right? It depends on their finances, their job, whatever they got going on, right? It depends on all those things. So overall, as, as agents in the biz, we say, yeah, it's a great time to buy. It's always a good time to buy. But you know what? It really depends on your situation. So when we meet, Let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about your situation, what you got going on, and then we'll all be able to determine if I think it's a it's a great time for you to buy right now, or if you should hold off until later. Now, now look at that statement right there, guys. It's different from it's, it's a difference between selling, being that salesman, that sleazy salesman, to being a consultant at that point, right? That's you building rapport. Now, at that point, you're caring about their feelings. You want to make sure that you are you're holding on to them tight, that they're, that they're, that they don't make a bad decision, and we're going to figure that out together, Mr. Customer, right? Yeah. That's the warm and coziness that you want to make them feel. Okay. So let me give Cass some feedback on his call, right? Um, overall, energy was great. Intentions were great, right? But there's some fine tuning we got to do. Um, and here's the analogy I want to make with you, Cass. Cass, you play mm-hmm. basketball or football or any sports? Football. Football, okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relate this to basketball real quick, right? When you shoot a, th- a shot, in the beginning, when you're first learning how to shoot a shot in basketball, you're, you're not doing all these crazy du- uh, dribbles and spins and, and crossovers and everything, right? You're just trying to learn right. how to throw the ball in, right? 
right mm -hmm. now on your call, you were doing crossover spins and you were throwing the ball in, right? So, and you were, and you were missing some of the shots because you were doing too many crossovers. So, mm -hmm. Sorry, my dog's interrupted. Hold on. <laughs> Dog is doing crossovers right now. <laughs> He's going to try to go for that three-pointer. <laughs> So we got to we got to stick with the simple the simple two point shots right just the simple shots in the beginning Cass of just mm -hmm. stick to the script keep it very basic hit the ALM then once you get comfortable and you master that then you can start throwing your own little spins on it your own little additional things and stuff like that right but I would definitely keep it very simple because you might get yourself in trouble and you might like fumble or stutter because you, you got yourself in a situation because you were yeah. being a little more flashy right um but i think that's the only critique if you do that i think your calls are going to be solid and then from there you could build on that um because to be. me it wasn't really clear the appointment was clear we got that but location and motivation those were a little cloudy you kind of asked okay. but if i was zillow and i was grading your call if you hit alm it was like you kind of did, but it wasn't like clear, clear to me, right? Okay. Um, so that's that's what I would work on, bro. So I, I think for motivation, I asked what makes you want to go out and see the property. Is there a better question to ask, or what makes you want to buy a house in the first place? Okay, so that's that's great. You asked that question, um, Cass, because motivation for Zillow, it's not motivation that you're asking, right? It's a, this mm -hmm. is kind of tricky. When Zillow says motivation, they want to know like what your must haves are for the property. I see. What are things you're looking for in a property? That's what they're calling motivation. Okay. And, but really motivation is like, Hey, why do you want to buy a house? Right? Like that, okay. that's yeah. like the literal, the literal term, but Zillow motivation is like, Hey, what stood out to you? What motivated you to look at this property? Okay. Like what stood out? What are your must haves? What are you looking for in a property? Um, you know, stuff like that. That's what they mean by motivation. Okay. All right. So appointment is, is pretty obvious, right? Book the appointment location. Hey, is this the only area you're looking in? Are there any other areas you're interested in? Okay. That's location motivation. Hey, what did you like most about this property or what are some of your must haves in a property? That's, okay. that's motivation, right? And then from there, when they give you the answers, that's when you can build a little bit. Oh, San Jose, Milpitas. Oh, yeah, I grew up in San Jose. I love that area. Boom, boom, boom. Or you want a nice big kitchen. Oh, yeah, you know, do you entertain a lot, right? That's when you can build off of whatever they told you. Okay. Right? But at the very basic level, hey, let's book the appointment. Let's confirm it. I'll get back to you. I'll confirm. Location, hey, is this the only location you're looking into? Are there any other locations for you? And then number three, motivation is, hey, what are some of your must-haves? What did you like most about this property? Okay. That's the ALM at, at the basic form. So, okay. Cass, I'm going to give you a uh, – I'm not going to give you a full pass today. I want you to go back and refine this. Okay. You know, if, and if you want to get back to me in the next day or two, and then I'll yep. test you again, and then I think you should be good to go. Okay. We'll do it tomorrow. Can we do it tomorrow? Let's do it tomorrow, bro. Uh, contact me, and we'll set something up. Uh, okay, Ray, I got a quick question. Uh, what about the reviews? He, he said something. I think Cass was trying to get a review. I think that's what he's trying to get, right? The five-star review or, or yes. yeah. Are we still doing that? Kike? Is that something that we're still asking? We can honestly, but Zillow is not, they don't really, I mean, as long as you're giving good service and all that stuff, it's, it's, they're not harping too much on the reviews. It's, it's your answer rate. It's your ALM rate and it's your conversion rate that they care about at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, if you want to remind them, Hey, you're going to get a call from Zillow. They're going to survey you. Uh, if you leave me a good review, I'd appreciate that. And that's it like that. You don't just keep it real nonchalant. Hey, you might get a call from Zillow. If you give me two thumbs up, I'd appreciate it, but don't go into more detail. Like refer me to your friends and family. Like we haven't earned that right yet. Just keep it very surface level. Right. Okay. Uh, that should be like the, the most like minuscule thing out of the whole call like they it should be very a very small point to the to the whole entire phone call but i think if you do your job and you book the appointment and you find their motivation and you have a good energy they're gonna if they do get the call it's a given that they're going to give you pretty i never asked for it and my my satisfaction is pretty high exactly okay. that's exactly what's going to happen right if you do everything you're supposed to they're going to give you a good review anyways right yeah so i like yeah, it's, it's only three questions right that you're really asking 
right? I mean, once you start going over more, you start to add more reasons of why they should be judging you even more, right? So that goes back to keeping it simple, right? Let's not add things that we don't need to be adding, which is going to give us more reasons for them to give us less than five stars, right? Or bad reviews, right? Yeah. And then when you meet with them, Cass, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. when you meet with them, that's when you're going to throw your flavor, your personality, you're going to okay. win them over. You're going to talk about their family and why they moved from out of state and you're going to get really into detail and get to know them on a personal level that happens when you meet with them in person from i feel like call, i could just, just book the appointment that's it i feel like we could do it again right now and i'll give you a better one <laughs> <laughs> uh we can if you guys want to if anybody wants to stick around if anybody needs to go feel free to go i'll i'll quiz you again right now if you want to do it right now yeah i'm ready to go right now let's do it all right let's go uh uh same same scenario one two three main street uh i want to see it today at two o'clock uh ring 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 alex here connecting you with enrique hello hey how's it going enrique my name's Cass. i'm the zillow premier agent specializing in the bay area um i see you're calling about one two three main street when would be a good time to get you into that property are you available uh morning or afternoon better um, you know what? I'm available maybe after two o'clock. So like between two and four, uh, okay. I can go today or even, uh, even tomorrow if that works. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to the seller. Uh, I'm going to bounce those times off. Uh, and then we, I'll get back to you and I'll let you know, uh, if they confirm it or if we need to set up a new time. Um, in the meantime, have you, uh, seen any other homes in the area or better question, um, is there any other areas that you're interested in? Um, you know what? I like this area of San Jose, kind of South San Jose, and I'm okay. even uh, willing to go to like Morgan Hill. That's probably about as South, but yeah, yeah, kind of between San Jose to Morgan Hill, uh, South San Jose to Morgan Hill is kind of the areas I'm looking at. Okay, great areas. Um, and so as far as 123 Main Street, what makes you want to get out and see it? What do you really like about it? Um, you know what? I like the fact that it was, uh, it looks like a newer home. It looks like it was, you know, already remodeled, freshly painted, all that good stuff. Like, it seems like there would be nothing I have to do. Just put my TV, my couches and just get set up and, and get my family in there. So I like that the fact that it's, it's ready to go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Something, something similar to that. That's ready to go in my budget. Okay. Sounds good. Um, are there any other questions that I can get answered for you? Um, no, not really. I think I just want to kind of check this one out and then kind of go from there. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a text, uh, so that you have my contact information and then I'm going to contact the seller. I'm going to see what times work for them. You said, uh, today, maybe at two or four tomorrow, same time. So I'll check with the seller to see if those times work. Uh, and then I'm going to confirm everything with you once again. Uh, you'll have my contact information just in case you have any questions or you think of anything, please feel free to give me a call or a text uh, and I'll get right back to you. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay, great. I'll be in touch, Enrique. Have a great day and we'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. Let's okay. go. <clears throat> Wait, someone booked an appointment and Cass booked an appointment right now too, right? <laughs> <laughs> You guys see that, guys? You guys see the difference between those two calls? With a little bit of coaching and refining, that was like night and day, bro, right? Yeah. You kept it simple. You added, you know, a little bit of flavor to it, but not too much, just subtle, subtle flavor. Um, and you stayed on track, bro. And to me, that was uh, as if I was the buyer, it was really easy for me to follow what you were trying to do. Right. Right? Like, it, it, it was perfectly clear. I'm going to meet you. You know, you're going to confirm with me, I'm going to meet you. And then we're going to go from there and, and then, you know, see what happens. Like that was, you made my, you made it really clear to me on how the process was going to go. Right. Great. Uh, so now, yeah, now, bro. Now, look, look what practice makes guys practice. You, you didn't sound like a rookie, right? You did not sound like you were a newbie. You didn't sound like you've never done this before. Right. right. So this is what practice in turn should look, you should be able to make a phone call at this point uh, of your game, which is where you're at right? And someone, you should be able to have enough uh, command where people will follow you now, right? Yeah. Right. So good job on that, brother. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And part of it, guys, is because Cass is not a rookie, right? He's been in different sales environments before. So the people person skills, he already has those naturally. 
all he's doing is just learning our particular product, right? Once you know how to talk to people and get along with people and stuff like that and present yourself, that's a skill that translates to any, any uh, industry, right? It's just learning the specifics about the product you're selling. And that's what it, that's all it was for Cass, just fine tuning the script. So good job, Cass. I give you a pass on, on the script part. Um, I don't know if I've sent you the email already with all the things you have to complete for flex. Yeah. Yeah. So make sure we get all those other parts complete and okay. then, uh, and then we'll go from there, bro. So get in touch with me after and we'll figure it out. Okay. okay. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for showing up. Hope you got some value. Thanks for your participation and uh, let's make it a great week. Good job, Cass. Later guys. Job. Nice. Later. Thanks for all the coaching. Thank you.